Hello and welcome. So in this lecture video, we'll be talking about the trial balance and then how the trial balance can be used to generate the income statement and the balance sheet and the statement of owner's equity. Okay, so before I did, before I do that though, I wanted to reference a typo that I had on page 32 where I was talking about this example of, of figuring out how much money you may have had to start the day. I want to clarify that example because I wrote 100 and I meant to write 50. So if you don't remember, let's take back to that example. If you don't remember how much money you had to start the day, but you had an ATM receipt for $50 and then you know that you spent $50 on something else. And then what you had is $25 left over. Well, you know that you didn't spend what you started. So you had to start with $25. So basically I was trying to use that and I wrote down 100, I meant to write down 50 to explain how we could explain conceptually the same idea here of how much did we have to start the beginning balance in cash plus this is cash that you added which is like to your wallet which is like the ATM this is cash that you spent which is like that 50 and then this is how much cash you had left over which is like your ending balance and this is saying well how much did I have to start the day can I figure that out yeah, you can. Well, in this case, how much you took out from the ATM equals how much you spent. You still have $25 left over. That means you had to start the day $25. Okay. So go back to your notes and substitute 50 there, not 100. Typo. Okay. So let's come up. Let's talk about the trial balance. So what the trial balance does is it lists all of our accounts in the general ledger and then there are balances. So if we look at this, this is our trial balance and it says it's a list of all the account balances in the general ledger. So what we do with our trial balance is we write down all the accounts in the general ledger and we start off with our assets and then we move into our liabilities and then we move into our capital and withdrawals and then we look at our income statement accounts which are our revenue accounts and then our expense accounts. And then what we do is we list all those over here in the first column and the second column we write debits at the top of the column header and then credits and then we pull in the respective balances here so cash it says 4350 where did i get that i get that from the general ledger accounts receivable zero where did i get that from the general ledger supplies 9720 from the general ledger prepaid insurance from the general ledger so think those T accounts that we're doing. Those T accounts are simulating the general ledger, posting to the general ledger. So I get all these balances, all these dollar amounts from the general ledger. So then what I do with my trial balance is I add up all my debits and I add up all my credits. And I need to make sure that my total debits equal my total credits. Okay, and then in this case, you see that they do. We have 45,300 in total debits, 45,300 in total credits, and they have to be equal. And if they're not equal, that means the accounting equation will not be in balance. Assets will not equal liabilities plus equity. You did something wrong. Something went wrong. Okay, so let's talk about how you would figure out let's say that the debits did not equal to equal to credits that your trial balance did not balance okay and before i even talk about that let me go back and talk about the purpose why do we do the trial balance we do the trial balance exactly like what it says it's trial we're making sure that our debits our total debits equal our total credits before before we do our financial statements, before we do our income statement and our statement of owner's equity and our balance sheet. We want to do this as a check to make sure our debits equal our credits before we generate our financial statements, our income statement, balance sheet, and statement of owner's equity. Because if they don't balance, then the balance sheet's going to be wrong. Because the balance sheet shows the accounting equation, the balance sheet will be incorrect. So we want to do this first. So that's why we do the trial balance. So let's go back to what I was talking about, where let's say the debits don't equal the credits that we have. We have a problem here. Like, what do we do? How do we figure that out? Well, we have some steps here on the next page for figuring out where we found where we made an error. 
The first thing is you want to make sure that you added up all the debits and credits correctly. So I would go through <clears throat> and I would say, did I add up all these numbers correctly and all the credit and all the credits correctly? That would be the first thing. The second thing is make sure the account balances are correctly entered from the ledger. I'd go back and say, well, it says 43.50 cash. Is that right? For, did I pull that right? Is that right? Is that what's in the general ledger? Did I copy that over correctly? Yes or no? Okay. Then I could say, see if, if debit or credit accounts are mistakenly placed on the trial balance. Did I put that as a deb? Did I, maybe I put that as a credit column for cash, 43.50, where we know it should be in the debit column. Maybe I made a mistake. I put it in the wrong column. I would check there. And then I would then recompute. So re add it up again, make sure I did that. And if I found an error, I would add it up again. If you're still not balancing, then you have to start looking at making sure that each journal entry that you did in your general journal, remember this is in your general journal, that each journal entry you put into the general journal was posted to the general ledger. So this is more time consuming. That's why you want to attack some of these higher level issues first before you start looking at did I, <laughs> did I post all the all the journal entries from the general journal? Did I post them to the ledger? If you did, then the next thing you want to do is go back through and check your individual journal entries to make sure that the total debits equal the total credits, okay? So I guess if I were to summarize the steps for finding the errors, look for the easiest errors to find first. Like, did you do an adding error wrong for your debits and credits on the trial balance? Before you start looking at, did I do the journal entries correctly? Because that's way more time consuming, okay? So as I was saying earlier, we knew the trial balance before we do our financial statements. And we do this, do the trial balance to make sure that our debits equal our credits before we do the financial statements. Because if our debits don't equal our credits, we shouldn't do the financial statements yet because the financial statements won't be right. Once our trial balance works out and it balances, debits equal total credits, then we can use the trial balance to then prepare our financial statements. So I'm going to look at page 36 and look at our income statement. So it says consulting revenue, 5,800 rental revenue, 300. So the first financial statement I want to do is my income statement. So where did I get this consulting revenue of 5,800 rental revenue from 300? I got that from the trial balance. Okay. Consulting revenue right there on page 34 of your trial balance. And then rental revenue of 300 right there on page 34 of your trial balance. And remember our income statement shows us our revenues and our expenses and then revenues minus expenses gives us net income. Where did I get this $1,000 rent expense, 1,400 salaries and $230 of utilities expense? I get them from the trial balance. Salaries, rent and utilities right over here on page 34 on the trial balance. The next financial statement that we'll do is our statement of owner's equity. As we talked about back in chapter one, the statement of owner's equity shows us our beginning balance in owner's equity plus our net income or minus our net loss. Net loss would be expenses are higher than income plus any investments from the owner minus withdrawals gives us our ending balance in capital. So I'm here on page 37, looking at our statement of owner's equity. We have a zero balance beginning capital because they did, Chaz Taylor just started his business in December. So balance is zero right over there. And then net income of 3470, where did I get that? That's from page 36 on your income statement, net income of 3470 right there. Okay. Plus net income. And then plus our investments of the owner from the owner of $30,000. Where did I get that 30,000? I got that from page 34 from your trial balance. C Taylor capital $30,000 right there. That credit that comes over here. Then I add the two gives me the 33,470. And then I have less owner withdrawals of $200. That is right over here from our trial balance of $200 right there. 
And then that gives me my ending balance in capital of 33,270. So I need to do my income statement before I do my statement of owner's equity because I need to show net income or net loss on my statement of owner's equity. After I do my statement of owner's equity, I can now do my balance sheet. So if we look at our balance sheet here on page 37, we have cash, 4350. Where did I get that from? From my trial balance right here. I have my receipt by supplies of 9720, my prepaid insurance of 2400, and equipment of 26000. I pulled that in from the trial balance right over here onto my balance sheet. Then it lists my total assets. And then I have then I start looking at my liabilities. I have my accounts payable, 6200, unearned revenue of 3000. Where did I get that? Straight from here from the trial balance, 6200 accounts payable, unearned revenue 3000. Then I can add those two, gives me total liabilities of 9,200. And then on here on page 37 on our balance sheet, we see C. Taylor Capital, which is the ending balance in equity, 33,270. Where did I get that? I got that from my ending balance for my statement of owner's equity. That's why I need to do my statement of owner's equity before I do my balance sheet. So then I added my total equity, 33,270. Plus my liabilities gives me my 42,470, which is my total liabilities and equity. And that equals my total assets of 42,470. So what our balance sheet is really showing us is our accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. But of course, our balance sheet shows us our individual assets and our individual liabilities in, cap, in equity accounts as well. Okay. So... Going back to what is the trial balance, it's a test to make sure the debits equal credits, and then it also forms the basis for preparing our financial statements, our income statement, statement of owner's equity, and our balance sheet, okay? In terms of some presentation issues for our financial statements, and I'm not a real stickler for this, I'll just tell you on the test, I'm not a real stickler for this, but here's some presentation issues. Dollar signs are not used in your in your uh, in journals or ledgers. So when you're doing your journal entry, don't need to do the dollar sign. They do they do appear in the financial statements, um, and also in your trial balance. And the usual sign, usual practice is to put the dollar signs beside only the first and last numbers in the column. When the amounts are entered in the journal ledger. Commas are optional to include, to indicate thousands, millions, and so forth. I tend to do that. Commas are always included in our financial statements. And then companies, finally, the last one, companies commonly round amounts in reports to the nearest dollar or even to the higher level. And so that's what you see over here, whole dollars. Okay. All right. So that ends this lecture video, although I just want to make sure with presentation issues, I'm not testing you on this, okay? These are presentation issues, they're good to know, but I am not a stickler for that. I am more concerned about your thinking product. Can you think through these problems in accounting? I think accounting is logic games. That's what it is. Most of you will not become accountants. That's totally fine. But if I can get you to think like an accountant, think through these problems logically, that's what I'm really looking for. Not can you memorize presentation issues, okay? You can look this up on Google. But to think through the problems, that takes practice. Okay. All right. So I'm going to end this lecture video now. And I'll start the next one on those quick check problems. Thanks so much. Bye.